Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam shows you how to install and set up Linux on a USB thumb drive. Adam also shows you how to make Linux portable and take it with you wherever you go. Wow, Linux really is super duper awesome. I normally don't start a video out this way, but I'm going to admit to you guys I'm pretty depressed. Um, I just spent the last five hours trying to get my USB to actually boot. In fact, I had 90% of the uh, video completed. Uh, I went to show you guys I was all proud uh, to, to boot up from the USB stick, and then it failed miserably. So at first I thought, oh my god, my USB stick, something happened to it, so I, got, I had another one laying around. I tried that. Failed miserably. So then I was like, oh, maybe it's something to do with Ubuntu. So I downloaded OpenSUSE, failed miserably. Uh, okay, well, maybe I'll try Mint, failed miserably. Eventually I did get Puppy Linux to work, but this was more to show you um, using like an Ubuntu type derivative to actually set up like a persistent state. So that way you could actually download software and try uh, certain things out on the USB stick. So. Uh, I narrowed it down to uh, this basically just being, I think, a third-party uh, software issue. Um, it's like Pendrive uh, Linux uh, is the website. Uh, regardless, I'm still going to go over this method on how to use it, um, just because uh, uh, if they do get the bug fixed in maybe a next uh, release, um, which I'm, I'm sure they will, um, then uh, this is like a fantastic way to try this out. So try at your own risk. Um, uh, I did go on some forums to see if other people are having issues. I didn't see anything reported, so I don't know. Maybe maybe this is my issue. I don't know. I couldn't figure it out. So, uh, and I mean, oh my God, I was editing uh, command or text files and all this crazy stuff uh, just to just to get things to try to work and nothing. So anyway, we'll go over that method real quick. Um, but the more foolproof method uh, is actually taking, uh, booting into a live CD and then uh, dumping that live CD onto a USB stick. So for method one, all you're going to need is, uh, this is the third party software method on Windows, a uh, USB stick, um, bigger than uh, two gigs, but it doesn't need to be more than eight gigs because um, anything bigger than eight gigs uh, will just be a, a waste of space. So, um, you know, whatever USB stick you have lying around, but I recommend at least two gigs worth of space. If we go to method two, which is actually using the live CD, uh, obviously you're going to need a USB stick, but uh, you're also going to need your Ubuntu CD from last week. Um, if you never bothered to do this method, uh, watch last week's video. It shows you how to create a bootable uh, live uh, Ubuntu CD. And uh, you will need that to dump that information onto the USB stick. Warning, this method will destroy all data on your USB stick. What does this mean? If you have a USB stick with data currently on it, and you use this program to install a Linux operating system to the USB thumb drive, all, I mean 100% of your data, will be cleaned off of your precious USB thumb drive. All right, so now I'm booted into Windows 7. I'm going to show you how to do it with the third-party um, software uh, through Windows, uh, also known as method 1 that I was talking about earlier. Um, and we can also call this the fail method because it didn't work for me. So we're going to go to pendrivelinux.com. And uh, my only complaint about this website is it's real easy to click on crappy software that we don't need. Uh, I don't think it's harmful or anything, but it's just harder to find what you need. So what we are looking for is the um, uh, universal USB installer, easy as one, two, three. You'll be tempted to click this here. Do not click that there. You actually need to find the universal USB installer, whatever version uh, we're on right now. Right now we're on 1.8.9.2.exe. Click that and download that and wait for it to finish downloading. Okay, this time, feel free to plug in your USB. Uh, keep in mind, as already stated, this will wipe out everything on your USB, so make sure you have nothing of importance on there. Uh, and then what we're going to do is you're going to open up Windows Explorer, and you're going to navigate to the um, executable, the universal USB installer. Right-click on that, run as administrator. Yes, of course, we want to run this. Uh, read the licensing terms if you want. Click Agree. And then here, you're going to select a distribution. If you haven't already, uh, feel free to watch my distribution sort of uh, video. A uh, link will be provided. And uh, I know the Ubuntu's don't work, Mint didn't work. I'm not sure about Fedora, OpenSUSE didn't work. So I'm just going to go right to Puppy Linux. Actually, 
let me let me show you Ubuntu real quick. Um, so uh, what you would do is download the ISO if you don't already have it. And what this will do is this will automatically go open up your web browser to where you can download it and it'll automatically save it to your hard drive. So just wait for that to finish. Okay, and once your ISO image is done downloading, you're going to click uh, browse and you are going to find where it was saved. So uh, you're just basically pointing to the ISO image that uh, the program downloaded. Uh, here it says show all drives, use with caution. I don't recommend checking that um, because you don't accidentally want to, especially if you have multiple partitions or uh, another external uh, hard drive, you do not want to accidentally overwrite that. So just be very, very careful. Uh, in fact, if you're scared, which I don't really blame you, open up a Windows Explorer and just make sure, see, this is my USB. It's a D, it's, in this case, it's my D drive. Uh, your drive letter will change, but just make sure that it's associated with what you want to wipe out. Remember, this will wipe out your data. So I only have the D. Uh, I know that's my USB. I'm happy. Uh, and then here you set your persistent file size. So obviously, the bigger you make it, uh, the more space and stuff you're going to have on your USB. So um, you know why not set it to the max? And then just create, click Create. Uh, this will give you a warning of everything is going to be overwritten. We know all of this stuff. Just click Yes and uh, just let it do its thing. OK, and once it's done, uh, eject your USB. And let's see. How this worked out for you. And I'd like to apologize up front for the crappy video quality, but this is the way I can show you guys this. So again, um, what we're going to need to do is we're going to uh, need to go into the BIOS to make sure that we change uh, the boot order. <clears throat> so uh, every computer is different again. Um, I hit F2 to get into mine, but what you're going to do is you're going to scroll over to the boot tab. If you have a boot tab, you're going to look for something like this. And you can see now my boot order is already kind of set up, but um, it would be first it would read the CD-ROM, then uh, a USB hard drive, and then uh, the third option is this um, USB stick that I've already got plugged in, and then my very last, or my second to last one is the actual hard drive. So I'm already set up, but uh, you would just follow the prompts on the bottom to rearrange however order. You need to rearrange it to make sure you boot off the USB stick before your physical hard drive. So escape that. Uh, do you want to save it? Um, if we made changes, we would, obviously, but I didn't make any changes. And as you can see, it didn't work. If you get this and it's just blinking, blinking, and blinking at you, it failed. Okay, so this is basically method two. So what we've done is we've booted into our live CD. If you don't know how to do that or create that, again, watch the video from last week. So once you've booted into your live CD, uh, you're going to click the little dash home search, I don't even know what that's called, button. And then we are going to type in uh, start for the startup disk creator. So we are going to click that. Uh, feel free to already plug in your USB stick. Um, I have done that. Again, this is going to wipe out everything. But uh, once you pull this up, um, it's basically going to take everything from the CD-ROM and it's going to dump it uh, into our USB and make it bootable. And here, if you want a persistent state, uh, meaning to be able to um, uh, save files to that, um, just set that up to however high you want. I'm going to set it up to the max. And then just click the Make Startup Disk. Uh, and then just wait for it to finish. Simple as that. Okay, once it's done, plug in your USB, take out your CD-ROM, and at this point it should boot right off of your USB stick if everything worked out properly. And it uh, looks like things are loading, um, and I've gotten much farther than I did uh, uh, compared to method one. So let's see what happens. All right, so far so good. Once you get to this stage, just click the Try Ubuntu. And once everything boots up, you can see I am using Ubuntu just fine. Um, there is one thing I need to show you. I, I can't guarantee everything is going to work uh, as it would like a normal install, but it should be fairly close. And if you go to the Ubuntu software, I did find out that you have to change some settings in order to install software. You're going to need to go up to the Edit, you're going to go to the software sources. Uh, originally what happened is the CD-ROM from Ubuntu 11.10 uh, was checked for me. And also if you go to other software, uh, the CD-ROM, oh, that was also checked. So um, I unchecked that. And like I said, this was checked. Um, make sure that that is unchecked. Um, and then you should be able to install packages. So let's look at Audacity real quick. 
and then yes I have the install button I can install this and it will be there uh, in fact I can show you um, and you see this actually moves pretty quick I mean for for being off of a USB stick I pretty much have almost no lag after it boots up um, so this is chromium this does not come installed I actually installed that um, and you know things are working pretty pretty good so that's it uh, you should have a working USB and method 2 definitely seemed to work much better than method 1 well, that's probably enough information for today. Um, if your hardware supports this method and you can actually get it to work, uh, hopefully you can, um, try method two if you're having issues, uh, then uh, I totally recommend, hands down, this is the best way to do it. Uh, not only is it much faster than using uh, your CD, uh, but it is also awesome because you can actually edit and save programs uh, to the actual USB stick. So it's like portability right in your pocket. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to check out my website, greenhornlinux.com. Catch you next time.